every school had elected, we actually had district schools, we actually had boards elected by parents in the area electing their local school boards. It was almost done as a parallel to local government. And I think there is a need not only to say we oppose changes, but look forward to strengthening the role of parental governors and teaching governors on those academies which already exist, which don't have them. But on this motion, it is good that we were united, it is good we work together, and it's something which we should have as common cause. Do you catch the Tremendous difference to poor families. Kept six formers on 
more and more we are in a society where we need to be very well educated, get jobs. We need to get our children to stay on at school and do the best they can. And I think that local authorities did a fantastic job at having vegan schools, at flagging up good practice, at making schools go into cluster groups so that we could all talk about good practice. We could all cooperate across the phases, primary and secondary. Such a lot of good work, seems to me, could go down the drain. So I fully support this motion. Thank you.
Before the Council, we're going to introduce a statutory instrument which is referred to Liverpool, which would put us on the same footing as 11 other councils who subsequently, that May, went on to have a referendum on whether there should be an elected mayor. Interestingly, only one of those councils decided to have an elected mayor, and that was Bristol, who decided by its 230 votes, 234 I think, to have an elected mayor uh, on a turnout of 20%. All the other core cities, like Leeds, like of course these big cities like Wakefield, all voted against. We said at that time we would accept the people's decision. We said then that we should uh, have, have a referendum so that the people could actually make their view felt. We now reach a situation where we could have three Liverpool mayors. We know that there will be a city region mayor next May. We know that because we agreed it as a council. We didn't particularly like it, but that was the way to get devolution. We know we've currently got an elected mayor, and we know that uh, we have a law mayor. Now, I can think of nothing more confusing as we try and establish what I believe to be important, as I said before, a Liverpool city region, to have no less than three mayors. So we could, actually, in the middle of uh, February, just decide as a council to abolish that position. But, I don't think that would be right either. Although I believe that people in Liverpool would choose to abolish the elected mayoralty, that again should be their decision. Now we can either choose to have a referendum, even if that was held on the same day as the regional mayor, it would still cost in the order of a quarter of a million pounds. That's a lot of money to spend at a time when we all know there are difficulties. Isn't it better? to have a comprehensive consultation with the people of Liverpool about the three choices that are now available in law, one of which was not available when we took the decision four years ago. Then it was either cabinet leader or elected mayor. Now it's those two alternatives and they return to an improved and enhanced committee system, very like uh, the one that we had just for one year in 1999-2000, for those of you who were here, which worked very effectively indeed, and involved all the members of this council in the decision-making process. So we, I believe, have to accept that there will be a governance change. The difference between us might be do we, as a council, make the decision, as I was told by Mayor Anderson last time, we, the administration, will decide, or will it be the people who are consulted about this so they can decide how their city council is run. My Liberal Democrat colleagues and I believe the latter of those, and that's why we're asking today, before we even think of having a vote in February, ask the people, trust the people, listen to the people, give them the options to see what they have to say. My Lord, my Lord. I can't begin by uh, congratulating my good friend of the council, Ken, on his speech at the uh, rally the other day outside St George's Hall. I thought it was the best speech I've ever heard you make. It was really, really good, and I, I, I thank you for it. Um, there ain't been the nice bit. <laughs> <laughs> there is a puzzle that many of us have wandered over in long nights in this council chamber. Which of the three councillors has the biggest own books by? Is he Councillor Gary Miller, Councillor Steve Bradford, or Richard Kent? That question is decisively settled by this motion. Two months after coming, a very poor second in the mayoral election, Ricardo wants to scrap it. Um, nice try, Richard. Um, so, just, I mean, it is kind of a bit cheeky, isn't it, honestly? Um, let me make the second point about this. Um, it's fairly settled knowledge, and uh, the mayor has made it clear, this group has made it clear, that we do not believe the Metro Mayor and the Liverpool Mayor should coexist. So, you know, we will be looking at this position quite soon in the future. Is this the time to do it? 
Actually, the other thing that strikes me is probably Richard is bidding to become a Labour MP because he's shown similar impeccable timing. They decided to trigger a leadership election by the Labour Party between the result of the Euro referendum and the debate on um, the Iraq war. Straight after we've got the result of this, he's choosing to have a debate about what is frankly a pretty second order constitutional issue for this city. We have to confront the real challenges laid down by the EU referendum result, the whole uncertainties over the Northern Powerhouse, or whether we will have a macro government period. This is not an intelligent time to indulge in a, frankly, rather futile political manoeuvre um, to overturn the result of a recent election, Richard. So um, we have more important things to be talking about as a council at this point in time. And nice try, but it's a bit naff. Well, uh, it's a long time since we've done this, but I'm going to question you now, what? Two. 
A Gentile from the 15th has been recommended by the Whips, indicating that this was cross party support. So, is this motion agreed? Agreed. Okay, gluten free food on prescription by cattle, Tim Beaumont, yeah? So, the motion referred to the Select Committee, again, I'm, I'm going to advise that Agenda Item 16 and 17 have been referred directly to the appropriate Select Committees. So now we're moving to um, number 18, which is a proposal to introduce a late night levy. Thank you, Madam Walker. Our committee, if you can advise us in the committee meeting, looked at the, uh, the late night levy carefully. And the decision was made to defer uh, the, the decision at this time because the government is uh, reviewing the late night levies across. Across uh, England because of the uh, implications of um, off licenses. Many off licenses were exempt because of many of them closed before 12 o'clock. But only by levy, as you know, from midnight to 6 o'clock in the morning. And the, the factor of that was a lot of people were uh, pre loaded uh, before they were actually going out to all clubs or bars or, or, or pubs. And the bars and other clubs were saying, the problem is not us, it's what's happened before they come to us. The other factor was the uh, fast food places. Fast food places were completely exempt. And uh, as you know, if you go out, I go on a Saturday, Sunday, Monday morning, the fact that there's just rubbish all over the city centre and it all comes from containers from fast food places. So the government at this moment is going to be viewing uh, the late night levy. Because other cities have deferred uh, uh, their decisions on the late night levy. And this is the decision that was made with the, uh, uh, at the committee. And we ask the council to support that decision. Okay, I think you've noticed that there was an amendment. Councillor Mulvey? Yeah, just a copy for the being uh, circulated. It's just to explain the effect of this. The effect of this is to not accept the recommendation of the licensing committee, but to defer discussion of this matter, firstly to a seminar for all councillors, and then asking officers to bring back a decision within two cycles. This is a very important decision, which relates not just to issues of um, the budget, the costs and services expected by the ABI, but also potentially impacting on behaviour. We think it's important that councillors have the opportunity to listen to the arguments for and against the particular cause and then make a decision. And that's why, on behalf of my group, I propose it that we defer a decision to organise a seminar and then come back in the um, two cycles of the Rather than have a special 
seminar. And I actually, in the, in the break, quite up front, approached Council along and said, what's the purpose of amendments? And he actually said, it's because it's worth it. If I'm wrong, it's correct. No, no, it's correct. But in fact, it's what the Labour group has been sent to do, is to bring back late night levy and maybe all the recommendations for licensing committee. Well, actually, I disagree with that. I think there's a real danger. Um, if we have a survey, we have a recommendation, we listen to what people say, and then we decide we don't like it, so we're going to have another meeting. It doesn't make sense, it's not good use of time. If you just want to put late night levy in, just move it, not have this pretense, and not waste £25,000. The committee have discussed it. I would also up front, I think the police case was deeply flawed. And I said at the meeting, when the police case, the late night levy, actually said, when they did the analysis of crime, a nightclub from the late hours, a lot of it was literally nothing more than pinch pocketing and lost wallets and in parts and bars. And actually most of that late night levy um, problems the police were reporting for their justification was actually not starting at 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock, was actually between 3 o'clock till 6 o'clock in the morning. That was the police evidence case. And that doesn't justify a late night levy kicking in at midnight. Now, we all want to be European city culture, we all want to be global city culture, despite our previous debate, and I say that I'm just your way. Um, and I have to say, I think we're actually going to be in danger of killing off one of the key positive features. One of the other implications I don't like about the debate about late night levy is we are an incredibly safe city. If you look at the statistics of Liverpool, we are safer in many of the market towns like Nottingham, um, Leeds and other cities. Our track record of safety is better than virtually any other major city. So why do we need a late night limit to combat crime that doesn't exist? I think they sent the wrong signal out. It's not been factually placed by the police to put the case. And today we're seeing an underhand way, and I don't mean that with disrespect, an underhand way to reverse the decision of the people who deal with licensing issues day by day. I stand by the decision of the licensing committee. I will vote against the amendments. They made the right decision on the survey that gave them the answer we all need to go get. There is not a case for an impact levy, and we are the safest city in, in, the, in the country. Stick by our guts.
accepting the amendments or not, in which case you can vote on the amendment and not on the main motion. So we're now going to talk about whether I accept the amendments. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, indeed not. So, can we now vote on the uh, amended motion, please? Those in favour? Okay, 71 4, 3 against. So the motion, the amended motion is carried. Okay? So I think we're about at the end of the uh, meeting. Can I thank you very much for um, your indulgence with me? Well, uh, thank you very much.